What's up guys, DT here. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can dial in a John Mayer style inspired cleanish sort of a tone using the XFX2, which sounds like this. And like this. Let's do this. All right, so like always, we are inside Axe Edit and I've got my Fender Stratocaster here. This is a USA Deluxe 2014 model, I believe. Uh, N3 standard noiseless pickups. I'm on the neck pickup at the moment, or position number five, as they like to call it. Uh, I'm using Ernie Ball, regular slinky strings on there. Volumes on full, tones on full, so Nothing fancy going on there. Let's start dialing in uh, block by block. Obviously, we're gonna start with the amp and the cab. Now, when it comes to the amp, John Mayer has been known to use variety of different amps from Fenders to even boutique amps such as Tumbles. We're not gonna go that complex in this video. This is not a tone quest. What we're gonna do is keep things really simple and sometimes, you know, it's a really simple setup that can get you a really good usable tone. So let this preset sort of be a testament to that. Let's start with the amp. What better amp to use than a Fender when it comes to a Stratocaster and a clean tone and the single coil pickups. So we're gonna start by using a Fender amp. We're gonna be using the Super Verb Normal. This is, I believe, a Fender Super Reverb amp. Uh, you can read more about it in the X guide uh, in the Fractal Audio documentation. Really good sounding amp. So let's go ahead and add the cab as well. Now for the cab, what I like to do is a four by 12 cabinet. We're gonna be using a stock cap like always. F037 is what we're gonna go for. This is, I believe, a 4x12 Marshall basket weave uh, with a Celestian G12 25 watt speakers implementation. I believe this is a red wires audio cabinet. Now, before I tweak a few things in the amp or the cab, let's hear how everything is sounding at stock. This is how the preset is sounding at the moment. <laughs> Obviously it's not sounding anywhere close to what you heard in the beginning of this video. So we're gonna start tweaking stuff and make it sound more closer to the tone you heard. So let's start tweaking the amp. Uh, what we're gonna do is we want a very thick sort of a tone and already you can hear pretty much the uh, the setup that we have right now is sounding quite bassy and quite boomy. So we're gonna trim down some of the bass. Um, so we're gonna bring down the brace to around three. Input drive, I'm gonna keep it at five where it is right now. Mids, I'm gonna push up quite a lot because we were looking for that fat sort of a tone. So I'm gonna push the mids around six, 6.1 sounds good. Uh, it was sounding quite boomy if you remember, so I'm gonna push up the treble quite a bit as well, around 6.2. Now for the presence, I like to push it up quite a lot to give us that upper top end and then upper chime as well. So seven is sounding good. Also, what I did is turn on the bright switch as well in this particular amp. It sounds really good with the bright switch turned on. The level, I found it to be slightly lower, so I'm gonna push it up as well, around 9.8, minus 9.8 dB is good enough. Also, what I did is I went into the dynamic section and added a bit of dynamic presence. What this does is basically gives you that extra bite and that extra push of presence when you you know, pluck really hard or you play really hard. So what I did is added a good amount of dynamics presence around 3.3 is gonna sound really cool. Uh, before I play anything, I also went into the mic section of the cabinet, mic'd it up with a U87 condenser. You could actually skip this step as well. It really sounds good without the mic as well, but I like it with the mic. At the mic, this is gonna add some of that fatness and some of that mid that we want. So let's add the proximity as well. So proximity, I kept it around 2.6. This is gonna bring the mic closer to the cabinet or to the speaker cone, which is obviously gonna add in more amount of bass and give you a much more warmer response. Low cut, I always like to set it around 80 hertz and the high cut, I think in this case, I set it to around 10,600. I don't believe I changed anything else. Let's hear how this is sounding. <laughs> That's sounding really cool. It's close to the kind of tone we want, but it's miss missing that push, that that extra edge that we have, um, you know, when you push your amp a little harder and what you heard in the beginning of the video as well. 
multiple ways to boost an amp you could use a drive block in the beginning as well but what i like to do is use a compressor to give it sort of a clean boost this is a really good way of boosting a clean tone and i've used this many times in many other videos as well you've probably seen this what i'm going to use is a pedal comp keep the compression at five i'm not going to touch that bring the attack down to one millisecond i wanted to punch in as soon as you start playing don't want it to hold it too long i'm going to set the release to around 17 milliseconds i don't believe i touched any of this but this is where the magic knob is you can push the amp a little bit more by adding a little bit of more level to the compressor this is going to push the amp to get you that extra edge so i'm going to add the level to around 5.6 db again nothing very logical here all based on taste and the way it sounds to me it sounds really good so listen to this now <laughs> That sounds really cool but it's obviously missing a bit of modulation so what i like to do is also add in some reverb in there to make it sound really cool uh the preset is called slow dancing so why not add in something which is uh what was used on that track i believe john mayer likes to use a spring reverb as well so what we're going to do is add in a spring reverb in here so let's go ahead and add in the reverb block Again, it's completely based on taste, so choose the right reverb for yourself. I like medium spring quite a lot. Turn the quality to high. I push the time up to around 2.8 milliseconds, and I believe I push the mix down slightly to around 19% or 18%. So this is how it sounds now. <laughs> What I also like to do is add in a bit of a further enhancement to the preset by adding an enhanced block in there, which is going to give us that extra width and that extra dimension that we're looking for. Really good block to give that last bit of finishing touches to all of your presets. I like this a lot. It gives you that stereo sort of a vibe and it really does do a lot of good character to your tone. So what you can do is uh, push the width up to around 77% and depth I pushed in quite a lot around 90%. With that done, this is how it sounds. I'm going to try and play the track, probably end up butchering it, but let's see how it sounds. <laughs> sounds really cool now if you switch to the fourth position or the combination of the neck and the middle position uh, middle pickup it sounds really sweet in that position as well so if you play something like this really sweet to my ears i hope you guys like it too as well and if you want that spank and you want that sort of a dirty sort of a feeling from this preset as well you can switch to the lower pickup positions as well pickup position number two is going to give you that funky sort of a vibe That sounds really cool and if you go to the bridge position you get that really uh, bridge position sort of a lead sound just how you'd expect a bridge position to behave all right that's pretty much it when it comes to the basic tone if you want to take this to the next level and add in some bit of dirt in there and make it sort of a lead tone what i recommend is add in a drive block in between the compressor and an amp let's go ahead and do that in fact let's go ahead and add in the drive block you could be having this on scene too actually for a lead sort of a presence um let's change the distortion type to blues overdrive i really like this pedal and when it comes to blue sort of tones what i did is i pushed the drive down to around two and i also pushed the tone to around 1.8 sounds really cool 
and what I did is push the mids up quite a lot so that gives us that fatness what I'm going to do is push the mids to around 4.8 mid frequency I kept it around 636 only didn't touch that level I'm going to push down a bit so that it's not that dominant in the tone uh, what I also did is again optional let me just change the preset tempo around to 120 or something uh, so it's slightly higher tempo uh, what I also like to do is add in a delay block again purely by choice use what sounds right to you I'm just adding a digital mono uh, delay over here eight is sounding good uh, let's push the mix down to around 10 percent now when you do that let's push the feedback down to zero percent as well I don't want too much feedback happening so when you do that on the neck pickup again that solo up didn't I <laughs> but you get the idea it sounds really cool right so this is how you can actually use this sort of a preset to dial in a sort of a you know spanky sort of a lead tone as well so you could use the bridge pickup to sound like this and the neck pickup sounds like this sounds really cool not much for blues player am i <laughs> but <laughs> that sounds really cool in my opinion well that's pretty much for the tone hope you guys liked it but before we wrap up this video it's time for the honorable mentions for this video so i'd really like to thank arthur martinez uh, marco moran and claudio conio who made a contribution towards the channel i hope i pronounced your names right thank you so much guys and in case you are wondering how you can get an honorable mention in one of my future videos there are a couple of ways to support me monetarily. Super thanks is now enabled on all of the videos, uh, at least the ones which are eligible. So if you want to contribute directly from YouTube, you could use the super thanks feature. Or if you want to go outside the YouTube route, you can definitely contribute towards my PayPal. I have the link in all of my descriptions in all of the videos. Make sure you go and check it out. And if you want to support me, any amount is welcome. And I'll give you a shout out in my upcoming videos. It goes without saying, if you like the video and the content, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And in case you aren't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. There are thousands of ways to support a creator. I, I feel the subscription is the easiest one. It doesn't cost you a thing. It's a button. You click it and you get all the benefits of all the videos that are coming up in the future. So make sure you go ahead and do that. Until I see you guys in the next video, make sure you guys stay safe. Keep rocking guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.